Hi, I'm Patrick Garrity, and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about VMware vSphere 5. Um, there's some licensing things I'm going to go over and then some new functionality that's added. First off, there's no more core limitations on licensing, which is great. Secondly, licensing is now based on processor as well as VRAM, so the amount of VRAM that's configured. That's pooled across to your different hosts, so if you have um, 10 licenses, you're going to be able to pool the license VRAM. How that works is there's a standard enterprise and enterprise plus edition. A standard gets 24 gigs of VRAM configured per processor. Uh, enterprise has 32 gigs and then enterprise plus has 48 gigs. Um, so those, those pool based on the number of licenses that you actually have. So if one host has 150, the other one has 20 uh, gigs of RAM configured, it's pooled and leveled out and, and most people are fine under that licensing model. If you do have an extreme amount of RAM configured to all of your um, servers, then you're going to have to be more concerned and you're going to get taxed for that. Uh, VMware is, is kind of stating, hey, you guys are really using some advanced functionality that we're providing and that's why we're uh, charging you for those services. Uh, one thing that's cool is uh, from a server perspective, VMware uh, now per VM allows up to 32 virtual CPUs and one terabyte of RAM. Um, some advanced functionality that's added, auto deployment, if you have 10 or more hosts in an environment deploying at the same time, the auto deploy feature makes it much more simpler to uh, deploy hosts in virtual machines. Um, storage DRS is a type of storage tiering. Um, it's similar to if you've heard of EMC Fast, but it's actually on a full VM level. Um, so if there's storage available and you have storage tiers, it can move the full VM from one storage tier to the next. You got to be concerned about that amount of space. A lot of people like to do that on the SAN side with Fast, um, with an EMC, and there's some other products from the different vendors as well. Um, VMS now supports more than two terabits so you know for from a file structure perspective you're going to be able to grow uh, your VMS um, instances. Uh, vMotion is closer to being WAN capable it can uh, be used over lower latency instances and we're going to see as VMware gets further and further down the road you're going to really be able to vMotion easier in and out of the cloud um, as well as between data centers in different locations. Um, the last thing from a web client perspective, actually a few more things, but a web client perspective, uh, it's 90% functionality. So if you're used to using Outlook Web Access in Microsoft from 2007 to 2010, a world of a difference. Uh, same with VMware here. They really understand that uh, applications are becoming more web-based and, and that's why they're really upping the functionality there. There's also some other things like there's a, a VMware appliance that you can use uh, essentially a piece of software uh, that installs on the local disk so you can vMotion between servers without having to SAN. Um, so hopefully this quick snippet has helped you today in understanding a little bit more about the VMware licensing models uh, as well as some of the more advanced capabilities. I'll put some links as well to some VMware documentation where you can read more about it.